what shall be. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let me um, say that we've been talking about uh, relationship with the Holy Spirit, our friend, the Holy Spirit. Uh, we've been kind of focusing on supernatural help. We've been into, we've been uh, in the scripture in Isaiah, the 11th chapter. I want you to turn there again to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, the 11th chapter, starting at the first verse. And again, we're going to read, this is our focus scripture. Uh, starting at the first verse, it says, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his rod. I'm mean, out of his roots, excuse me. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of the eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of the ears. Now we've been talking about the Holy Spirit, supernatural helper, uh, I want to uh, uh, go to a, a, another scripture in the 16th chapter of the book of St. John. Let's go there. Jesus makes it makes it very clear uh, the importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives and the importance of 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 uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to to uh, uh, to, to, to lead us, to guide us. This is what he says um, uh, in, um, in verse number seven, St. John 16, verse number seven. It says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go unto my Father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Listen to verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Other Jesus is with now this is this is so very important to understand the importance of the Holy Spirit because Jesus, the Son of God, manifest in the flesh, tells them that it is that the the uh, that it is things that he wants to tell them he cannot tell them. First of all, they were not born again. They were not born again until in Saint John after his resurrection, he breathed on them and said, "Receive ye the Holy Ghost." So they were not born again. There were things that they could not bear. But look at what thir verse 13 says. How be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. So the spirit of God will guide us. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show thee things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show them unto you so it is things that jesus could not relate to the to the disciples to the apostles because they could not receive them because they needed a spiritual revelation the holy spirit gives us the ability to understand spiritually and not naturally the things of God are not understood by the natural man. They're understood by the spiritual man and they're, and they're spiritually discerned. Now we have talked about, let's go back to Isaiah 11. We've talked about supernatural help. We talked about this. We're talking about the seven aspects of the spirit of God, of his supernatural help. His help with the spirit of wisdom is supernatural skill. We said of uh, the spirit of understanding is supernatural comprehension. The uh, the uh, spirit of counsel is supernatural advice or advisement. The, the four is the spirit of might. That's the supernatural power of God, the supernatural energy power. Uh, the spirit of knowledge um, is supernatural information and intellect. We talked about that last week about Daniel. He was 10 times smarter, him, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
So that's the spirit of knowledge. That's Holy Spirit is coming to give you so much more than just to make you feel good, throw up your hands and speak in tongue. Now, and then, then we started talking about last week about the spirit of the fear of the Lord, which is a supernatural perspective, understanding, sensitivity, and reverence of God. That is, this is so very important. Now you notice that that in verse number three, the the uh, of Isaiah eleven, it says uh, that um, excuse me, verse number two, and the latter part of verse number two and the and verse number three says that it was a spirit of knowledge of the fear of the Lord. That's in the latter part of verse number two in Isaiah eleven. And then it says, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And so I was started talking about the fear of the Lord. It's mentioned twice here. It's mentioned that, that, um, that he would have the spirit of the fear of the Lord, but also he would have the understanding of the fear of the Lord. He would have the fear of the Lord, but he would have an understanding of the fear of the Lord. That word understanding there is different from the word understanding. It's not the same Hebrew word as in verse number two, where it talks about the wisdom and the spirit of understanding. This understanding is talking, it's the word raha. It's R-O-A-H, I believe it is. It's, it's ra, it, it's breath, it's spirit. It is the spirit, it is the essence of what the Holy Spirit brings into our lives. There is such an awe and respect and honor for God that the Holy Spirit brings. And this needs to be understood because the Bible talks about grieving the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes with great honor and respect for the Father and for the Son. It takes the thing of the Father and Son and reveals them unto us. When the Holy Spirit begins to move in, in, in a service, it's very important we understand how to respond. And, and the way that we should respond should be in respect, honor, and in the fear of the Lord. Now, now I'm going to I'm going to go through some scriptures as far as the fear of the Lord, because it to me, it is it is one of the most important uh, um, aspects, um, uh, dimensions of the Holy Spirit that God gives to us. And, and, and many times it's not emphasized, but the Holy Spirit brings a respect, a honor and a fear and a reverence of God. And we need to embrace that and understand that because the fear of the Lord is means so much to ours being able to walk in all that God has for us. Now, in, in Deuteronomy 10 and 12, I'm going to go to some scriptures. We're going to look at these scriptures. Deuteronomy, look at Deuteronomy 10 and 12. and um, that's the first scripture we're going to look at. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And it says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, walk in all of his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all of thy heart and with all of thy soul? Now, the requirement of God is that, first of all, he requires the fear of the Lord, the first thing the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is an honor of God that, that, that really balances all other aspects of our spiritual lives. It, 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 is, it, is, it, is the, it is the beginning, it is the foundation of us being able to walk with God, is to be able to, to have an awe and a, and a respect and, and a honor for God. So, in Deuteronomy, the word is telling the children of Israel that the requirements of God was first to have the fear of the Lord. I'm going to look at several because I want you to see because there's a lot of aspects of the fear of the Lord that I want you to get. Uh, look at Job, the, the uh, book of Job. And, and, and look at Job uh, 28, chapter 28 and verse 28, the very last verse. It says, and unto man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So the fear of the Lord is wisdom. If you want to be wise, 
the fear of the Lord will bring wisdom. It'll bring a level of wisdom of, 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 of understand of being able to be prudent in the in the things of life. Next, I want you to look at uh go to uh uh Psalms. Psalms 19 and verse 9. And and uh it says, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. The 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 um in the um amplified translation. It says, the reverent fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. One translation says that, in NIV says, the fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. So the fear of the Lord brings a purity, a purifying in our life. It, is a, it, it, it will help us to clean up our lives because when we fear God, I, and we respect God and honor him, the way that we conduct our lives will be based on that fear of God, is that, that, that we have a respect for God. I have met people that are not even saved, not even born again, that, have, that really have a respect for God. It was a time when, when, when it, was, it, was, it was kind of the, how can I say, the, the atmosphere that we lived in in years back. As I said before, there were years back, there was no need to, 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 to uh, lock the church. In fact, the church was left open. People could come in and pray at the church because people wouldn't come in and rob the church because they had too much of a fear of the Lord. They, they, were, they, they knew that there were consequences to their wrongdoing and they respected God. When you respect an individual, certain things you will not do. Uh, you know, I, when I was growing up and before I got saved as a young teenager, you know, I, we all I think we most of us probably learned how to cuss, you know, back then. And I learned how to cuss. I mean, I could I could cuss you out, um, you know, in school, you know, we would cuss one another out or cuss, you know, cuss at different ones, use profanity. And uh, but when I got around my parents, I wasn't going I, I look, you 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 have thought that, um, you know, my mouth was saved. I wouldn't use those words. Why? Because I respected them. I honored them. When we got around older people, we would we would respect them. We would say, ma'am and sir. See, that's a respect that has now been lost. That's why our world is in the problems that it is. They have no fear of God. They have no respect for elders. They have no respect for, for leaders. They, and so what happens is, is when the fear of God is gone, then the, the then uh, anything and everything can take place. So he said, the fear of the Lord is pure. It cleans, it purifies. In other words, I would have a pure mouth when I was around my mom, my dad, or I was, or I was around my teachers. We didn't curse in front of the teachers. We didn't curse in front of the grownups. Why? Because we had a respect and an honor. And that is the respect and the honor that if you have for God, it, 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 it will help to purify your life because you'll, you'll begin to line yourself up. Let me give you one more example. If you were asked to come into the presence of the president of the United States, even though you may not agree with his politics, even though you might not agree with his policies, if you got ready to go and meet with the president of the United States, tell me, would, you, would your approach be uh, just casual and you know, with no um, um, respect? Would you go in saying, yo, pa yo president, you know, what's up? No. You you would you would honor him. And 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 in the same sense, when we come before God, you should come before him humbly. Let me look at some more scripture. I want to give you the fear of God, it will purify you. Spirit of the fear of the Lord, uh the awe and the fear of the Lord. Look at Psalms uh, uh Psalms 33. I want to give you plenty of scriptures so that you'll have the foundation for walking in the fear of the Lord. Let the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. That's in the, that's in the NIV. In the King James Version, it says, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. You know, in awe of the, the Lord. I mean, God is so awesome. 
God is so powerful that we should always be in awe of him and a respect for him. One of the ways that 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 we will respect him is respect his house. There's a whole there's there's a whole scripture in the Old Testament that talks about when you come into the house of the Lord, how you should conduct yourself. And we cannot be so flippant in the presence of the Lord. Let the earth fear the Lord. Let the inhabitants of the earth be in awe of God. So we should be in awe of God. It should never become so common place. I, I, I say this. I hope that you will, will receive it the way that I want it. I'm not criticizing anybody. God is an awesome God. Apostle Paul said this. He said that, that we would understand the goodness and the severity of God. See, some teach almost God as uh, tolerant of everything, no standards of anything. God is like uh, my bro man. He, he's my homie. You know, and and they almost treat God as if uh, he is uh, 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 on their same level. God is so much higher than us. His thoughts are higher than us. And 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 we should never get to the place where we're so common with God. One thing that, that my mother used to, the old saying my mom used to have. And she used to say this. She used to say, you play with a puppy, you'll lick your mouth. Probably some of you have heard that. And the saying is this, is that a lot of times because God is so good, a person is so, so, so uh, nice and so on and so forth. Sometimes we can get so common with a person and we can get so familiar with this person until the sin of familiarity will cause us to lose our respect for the ones that we should respect. We can we can become close to God, but we would we should never get to the point where we don't reverence Him. It, you know, it's like with your with your kids. If you start joking with them, something sometimes they say something out of, out of and and my mother said that you can't play with kids because a lot of times they'll do stuff that that uh, you know and that you didn't want them to do. They 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 think that they they just get so common with you. I I, I know that God is our friend. I know that some teach, you know, you know, God is like, you know, he's just my homie. We, you know, and uh, but I'm going to tell you, I walk quietly in the presence of God. I walk respectfully in the presence of God. I cannot I cannot allow myself to be to 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 come become so common with God. Until I lose uh, the the respect and the awe and the reverence of God. So Psalms 33, eight, let the earth fear the Lord, let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. We should be in awe of God. Let's look at another Proverbs, Proverbs, uh, the, the first chapter. Proverbs one and verse seven. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning. It is the foundation of our walk with God. The Holy Spirit takes the things of God and shows them under, he shows us the fear of God. He shows us the reverence of God. And, and it is the beginning of knowledge. You cannot start without starting with the fear of the Lord. It is foundational. It is the essence. It's the breath of the Holy Spirit. One of the things that, that happens when, when the presence of, when the Holy Spirit presence is very strong, in a in a room, in a, in a congregation, and so on, there 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 will be a level of reverence there that that uh, that allows the Holy Spirit to have full flow, full uh, movement. I said this last week, and I and I say it again, is that we were taught in the old church that we did not walk during services. We honored the the service of God. We we sat. We listened. Even if we don't want to listen, we sat quietly and we received because we knew we were in the presence of God. Now, a few more scriptures I want to give you. Proverbs um, 8 and 13. Proverbs 
chapter 8 and the 13th verse says, now, now he's going to give you the description of what the fear of the Lord is and what it produces in your life. Number one, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Fear of the Lord will cause you to hate evil. It'll cause you to hate wrong. We need to understand that when, when people can do wrong, uh, and, and, and I'm not saying this to, to, to uh, focus on any particular person, but I, I, I've known ministers that, that, um, that could actually preach, preach on Sunday in the pulpit, preach after they have slept with some of the women in the church on Saturday. That's an irreverence. That's a that's a lack of the fear of God. And that is, I mean, it's it's you know how I I, I it's, it's it's a concept you can't even comprehend. Uh now of course we know many of them need need deliverance big time. But how can it be? You know, you say, how in the world could that could that even happen? I couldn't imagine, Lord have mercy. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. That I that I that I commit fornication on Saturday, and on Saturday I'm up preaching, and and uh, to the people, I would be so uh, convicted. I would be so so uh, convicted by the Holy Spirit until I wouldn't even be able to preach. I remember Apostle Eckhart said something. He said, "Man, if I did some of the things that these people did, he said I'd be flipping burgers at the Burger King, because my people wouldn't put up with it." You know, because we need to understand there's there we got to fear God. The fear of God will keep you in line, will keep you pure, will keep you righteous. And what I see sometimes with what, what folk do in the church, I, I, it, it's, it's I'm I'm, a, I'm a, you know as they as they say I'm scared of you. How can you? How can you be? Oh Lord, I, I, but. but <laughs> My God, and can sit up and 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 act sanctimonious in church and just as as just as devilish. Fear of the Lord is first will cause you to hate evil. If you don't hate evil, I'm not talking about hate the person, but I'm talking about hate evil. Hate unrighteous and evil. And it says, and, and it hates evil, it hates pride. You got to be proud and, and you got to be prideful. Anytime some of the people, some things that people people would do, uh, as as and call themselves men of God or women of God, we hate evil, hate pride, arrogance, and the evil way, and a fraud mouth. I, I, you know, in other words, it's talking about perverted and twisted speech. So you, so when you're in awe of God, I'm reading and the Amplified, it says the reverent, reverent fear and worship for all of the Lord includes the hatred of evil, hatred of pride, arrogance, and evil way, and the evil way, and perverted and twisted speech. I hate. So there's a so when we look at the look for the fruit of the fear of the Lord. When a person really fears the Lord, you'll find them they 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 hate evil. They 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 hate pride because they know pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So they you, you got these things will be manifest. If a person can still can operate in evil and twisted speech and pride and arrogance and uh you know and uh um you know that they have no fear of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. Anyone that doesn't have the fear of the Lord, you cannot trust them. You cannot trust a person. I don't care preacher. I don't care how good they preach. I don't care how good they teach. I don't care how many people, how many demons they cast out, how many people they get healed. You cannot trust anybody that doesn't fear the Lord. You can't trust them because they have no, that's like, uh, the fear of the Lord is like, uh, how can I say, it's like a, a, um, um, 
It's like a guard of their behavior. And then when they, even when they're not in the, in the sight of the, of a, of a person, I don't have to, so Sister Hogan don't have to be watching me every moment because I know the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. So I know God is checking me out. God see you. You may not, I may not be able to see you, but God sees you. And so when you fear God, it, 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 it keeps you uh, hating evil, pride, arrogance, evil way, and perverted speech. Let me give you a few more, because I'm gonna get, this is the fear of the Lord. So this is, this is the essence of what he brings. When I see people walking and have an awe and a respect for God, even if their their lives doesn't just measure up, I'm not saying because you because you can have a fear of God and you can be struggling in certain areas, but but uh, but you have such a fear of God, you're like David. David, David had Uriah killed to take his wife, whom he had committed adultery, uh, fornication with, and and uh, which was a sin wrong, murder, and also adultery. But his, but his heart, he, he prayed and said, Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. He repented. He understood. Now, of course, we know God judged that, judged him and, and took the child of him and Bathsheba, the first child of him and Bathsheba. But you know, of course he lived under the old covenant. We're living with the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. And so we have a great, better covenant based on better promises, based on a, a better relationship. Now, so let's look at, let's, let's look at uh, Proverbs nine, just go to the next chapter, Proverbs nine. And we're gonna look at number, uh, verse number 10. It says, I'm going to read it and amplify The reverential and worshipful fear of the Lord is the beginning, the chief and choice part. Listen, the chief and choice part of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is insight and understanding. So the reverential fear is the chief. It's the choice. It's like, you know, when you're getting a piece of beef and you say, I want the choice cut. In other words, it, it is the choice. It is the it is the chief. It is most important that we fear God. If people, if, if the fear of God ever hits the church again, as it did in times past, there would we would see more miracles than we've ever seen. Because out of that, out of that that atmosphere is where the presence and the power of God is released in abundance. Now I want to go to the New Testament because we've been talking about the Old Testament. Let's look in the New Testament and you'll see what the fear of God brings into it, each into our lives. And I, I want to start with Acts, the ninth chapter, the book of Acts. Chapter nine. And verse 31. This is after Paul had been, God had converted Paul on the road of Damascus. And, um, and you know, because he had been killing believers. But Jesus met him on the road to Damascus. And then look at verse 31 of Acts 9. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judah and Galilee and Samaria and were edified. And look at this. And walking in the fear of the Lord. See, the fear of the Lord is not just something you, you feel. It is a lifestyle. They're walking in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost and the, and the church was multiplied. I want you to see, when we walk in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost, the church is multiplied. When there is a respect and an awe for God that we walk in and, uh, and, and uh, walking in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, there is multiplication. So the fear of the Lord, we're to be walking in the fear of the Lord. They were walking in the fear of the Lord in the New Testament church. So the fear of the Lord is important in, uh, in, in the church. Now, let's look at 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, and the first verse. 
It says in the first verse, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Remember, remember we read Psalms 19, the fear of the Lord is pure. It's, it's, it's clean. In other words, if you walk in the fear of the Lord, you will find that, that your life, God, that, that there will be a cleansing that happens in your life. The, the, because the fear of the Lord will cause you to adjust your behavior because you fear God. You, you, you'll stumble, you'll fall, but because you fear God, you'll, be, you'll, you'll work on yourself. You, you'll work on your life to try to get your life in line with the Lord. And it says that perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. So holiness is not possible without the fear of the Lord. People don't walk in holiness that don't fear the Lord. You know, if he's if if God is your homie, God is just somebody like your God is like your your uh, friend, your your natural friend. Then then there's no respect. I I have so much respect for God. I, I and, and is that that uh, uh, I'm not going to when I come in the presence of God, I, I I'm not coming in with arrogance and with pride. I'm coming in with humility because I know I'm nothing. And I heard one, one uh, minister say that he had an encounter where he, 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 he met uh, where, where the Lord appeared to him. And, and uh, it was, it, the Lord was so awesome. He, he just couldn't do nothing but just get on his face. How many times in the old Testament did we read that Daniel fell on his face? I mean, these men of God fell on their face before God. So there's a reverence. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom it is the foundation it is it, it, it'll help to cleanse us it'll cleanse the church preachers will stop doing what they're doing uh the sins that they're committing and the things that they are doing if they really feared god they they feared god and loved his word so all filthiness of the flesh and spirit holiness is perfected in the fear of god so if you want to be holy walk in the fear of god walk in the awe of god let the holy spirit reveal to you and and make real to you the awesome fear and presence and reverence of God. The more you reverence God, the more God will move in your life. The more you respect him, the more he'll do in your life. Finally, the final word, uh, the final scripture on the fear of the Lord, because I wanted to give you a lot of scripture because the fear of the Lord in, in, in Isaiah 11 is mentioned twice. Now, every all the others are mentioned only one time. Wisdom, counsel, might, uh, understanding, uh, you know, understanding is mentioned twice, but it was two different words. So it's only mentioned once really in relationship to, uh, to, to what we said as far as understanding. But we, 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 we need to understand that anytime there is an emphasis on something, you know, uh, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. What is he saying? He's emphasizing rejoice. He said, I rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Whenever a person repeats themselves, it's usually because they're trying to emphasize something. So in Isaiah 11, the fear of the Lord is mentioned twice. It is for emphasis sake. It is to let you know that it is so important. I believe it's it's like the, uh, there's seven full spirit of God. I believe that this is like the, the, the middle that holds all this, these others together that the Holy Spirit brings into our lives. Then finally, let's look at Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and we're gonna, we, we, we're, then, then we're gonna be uh, ready to, to, to close. But look at, look at the book of, in the New Testament, Ephesians, look at the fifth chapter, and look at verse 21. And here, here it is, it says, Submitting yourselves one to another. In fact, uh, let, let, let me let me let me uh, let me go to verse eighteen because I'm going to give you some context because this is this because when we think of this, a lot of times if I just read that, you won't think of it in context with the Spirit of God, with the Holy Spirit. But but this is what it says in verse eighteen. It says, "Be not drunk with wine wherein access, but be filled with the Spirit." 
Okay, so he's telling you be filled with speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual song, singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord, giving thanks always unto all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then verse 21 says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. In other words, praise God, there, the fear of God is connected to being filled with the Holy Spirit, to being able to walk in the Holy Spirit. And submission, submission is cannot be done effectively unless it's done in the fear of God. L let me say it like this. If 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 I am am uh, doing right by Sister Hogan only because I'm afraid of what Sister Hogan might do or whether she would leave me uh, or whatever. That's that's uh, that's not a good example of the fear of God. Now, let's say that if I'm if I'm doing what is right by her and doing what is right and being faithful and committed to the covenant that we have made because I fear God. I'm not scared of her. I'm not scared of her leaving me. My my reason is because I fear God. Why am I going to treat you right? Oh, because I'm afraid you're going to lead a church. No, I'm, I'm going to treat you right because I fear God. Because ultimately, I've got to answer to God. You've got to answer to God. God's not going to God's not going to judge you. God's not going to judge you by what somebody else did or what. He's going to judge you by his word and by how you is how you operated as far as fearing God. Do, do you uh, respect and love your neighbor just because you want to get your neighbor to help you or you want them to be nice to you? Or is it because of the fear of God? When you fear God, you 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 it, it it's it's not a matter of that you're afraid of anybody, as I've said many times to you, people of God at, at Living Bread. I'm I'm not afraid of you. I'm I and I sh and, and that's kind of when I say afraid because people think you know well, you're going around in terror. No, I'm I'm saying I I fear God. I I know that I know the goodness. And I also understand the severity of God. I'm gonna say this, and then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna leave, and then we'll we'll the next week we'll, we're gonna talk about the, the spirit of discernment. That's the last one. But let, let me say this: I want to give you a, a a testimony. I remember uh, years ago, this is before we started pastoring, Sister Hogan and myself. Is that um, the Understanding the goodness and the severity of God, you got to understand that God, God will will have mercy. Mercy, His mercy is 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 long. But but there they are. There comes a time when 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 uh, God uh, will will uh, require uh, change in our lives, and judgment can come into our. The understanding the goodness and the severity of God. Some sometimes if we preach just the goodness of God, people don't realize that God is a consuming fire. That God is the judge of all flesh. That God will 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 God. The Bible says that He's going to turn the wicked into hell. That God is a God of judgment. And so years ago, this is before we ever started pastoring. The Lord was dealing with with uh, with me about some things. And um, and I was struggling in some areas and uh, needing deliverance. And uh, and uh, uh, Sister Hogan, the Lord showed her, showed her, me, and and in the she had like a vision, and and the Lord showed her, I was uh, there was a, a angel with a sword ready to strike me, ready to strike me down. And, and, and in, the, in the vision, she threw herself down in front of me and, and, and begged God to have mercy upon me. 
the Lord dealt with me after that about what what I was dealing with, and the Lord the Lord uh, it was it was um, a a a very firm ultimatum. <laughs> In other words, this has got to end, and 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 God delivered me. Now. There, there is, there is a time when God will judge. He says it like this in First Corinthians, the the eleventh chapter, the communion chapter. This is what he says. He says that that to examine ourselves in the communion, to pray one for another. He says that that uh, if we judge ourselves. We will not be judged. Now, some people, say, well, God ain't going to judge. God ain't judging. Why are you judging me? Well, I ain't judging you, but God will. God will give you a lot of mercy. But but there there can come a time when God will require a change. In other words, it's 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 it, and it and and He'll judge you in an area. So when we take the communion, we're to judge ourselves. We're to make the changes. We just say, okay, you know, I'm 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 struggling in that area. I need God. I need you to help me in that area. The, you're judging yourself. You're dealing with your own issues rather than having God deal with them. And uh, thank God that I had a praying wife that was able to pray, and and uh, and God spared my life. God spared my life. He knew what He had for me. I told you about my oh, my my uh, my father's uh, former pastor. I was just a little boy, but Elder Gordy. When the when the angel stood over his bed and said, "Preach or die," and 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 I could give you, I, I, uh, Kenneth Hagin said something in in one of his tapes. He was talking about how that he had decided his wife. They had been on the road ministering, but they had not been too successful financially, and uh, it was really putting a lot of pressure on his family. And God had told him to do it, but he decided he was going to go back and pastor a church. So he goes to the he goes to the church. They're in Sunday school. They're there, and all of a sudden, you know, they they're preparing. He's preparing to try to see if he's going to take the church. And actually, in the Sunday school, he falls out and he's dying. He falls out like he's dying. He's dying in the church right there. Falls out, and his wife comes and falls on his body, and says, "Lord, I repent for for putting pressure on him to not. Lord, if you spare his life." In other words, there can be a time when, when, when God will judge. So if you don't know how awesome God is and that God has the right, he has the power of life and death, and you're not in respect of God, and he talks about how his wife got down and pray and ask God to forgive her, because she was the one who was saying, look, we, we're going through all of these things, and da-da-da-da-da, and you need to go back to pastoring, and da-da-da-da-da. And 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 she, and she committed herself to allow him to do what God would have him to do. I can show you over and over again. Remember when Moses was coming, going, God had called him to go and take the children of Israel out of Egypt, tell them to go down and get these, and they're on their way. Him and his wife, and all of a sudden, an angel appears and ready to kill Moses. And his wife circumcises her son, throws the 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 skin, the covenant skin before uh, the destroyer angel and God spared Moses' life. But the Bible says that Moses was going to be killed. In other words, God was judging that Moses had not kept the covenant of circumcision. And the issues that Moses had, God was dealing with those issues. It Just because God calls you to ministry doesn't always mean that someone fulfills their ministry. You can you can die before you fulfill your ministry. You can die before your before your time. Sometimes God judges, and sometimes it's not a matter of 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 God's meanness; it's God's mercy. Sometimes God understands that if He doesn't deal with certain things and 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 judge certain things, that 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 your salvation is at stake. I'm gonna say this, and finally, I'll be. I know that I share a lot of experiences with you. I'm 70 years old. I've been walking with the Lord for 50 years, over 50 years. So there are certain things that I've, the experiences that I've had. And uh, I remember, I remember uh, we prayed for uh, uh, um, a young man 
and uh, God healed him of cancer. And uh, he walked with God for a time, but then he started falling back into his old ways. And um, started falling back in his own way, doing the same things he was doing before. I won't get into that. But anyway, he he literally uh, ends up the Lord, that cancer comes back on him. And and so we're praying for him. And and uh, three of us got the same revelation, even though we didn't even share it with one another until after. But the Lord gave, showed me, he said, I'm going to take him. I'm going to take him because if I don't, he will backslide and he will not even be saved. And his sister has been praying for him and, and pleading with me. She says, he, so the Lord said, rather than me heal him, I'm going to take him so that I'll keep my word to I told his sister that he would be saved. And, and so God took him. That wasn't God's best, but it was the best he could do. So we need to understand God is a good God. God is a good God. Yeah. God is God. God can also be, it is the is severe. He can be very severe. And so when we respect him, in other words, I, I don't get so common with him because he could. You know, so many people don't think about striking, striking God, striking people down and so on and so forth. I just I just had um, an experience, some information from one of my my spiritual uh, children. And uh, they had an individual in the church, in their church that came against them. I mean, came against them strong. And 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 literally. It was, you know, because I, I was privy to it because I'm walking with them through this. And uh, I won't go into all of the things that they were doing and all of the things that they were requiring. But uh, see, when you don't fear God, you'll come against it. And so they're coming against the pastor. They are, they are I mean, hostile toward the pastor because they just think that, you know, I'm coming against the pastor. But they don't know that when... Paul was on the road to Damascus. What Jesus said is, why, uh, why persecute thou me? In other words, you don't know when you're coming against the church and against God's people, you're coming against the body of Christ. You're coming against Jesus. And, and, uh, and this individual was so adamant. And, uh, I, and, and, but what happened was, is that the, 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 the individual was, was struck with a, um, with a with a with a with a uh, malady in their body, and and uh, uh, their their life is in jeopardy right now. If I told you what they did, you you say, well, why would somebody do? But that coming against leaders because they have no reverence for God, they just think that this is just an individual, this is just a man. I'm not trying to tell you because I don't want anybody worshiping me. I am not going to die of being eaten up. Like, like Herod did when those worms came. I will not be worm food. But what I am telling you is, is there needs to be a new reverence for, for God, for his house, for his people, for his leadership, for the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, and, and uh, a, a deep respect. And, and, and that will bring the power of God. That's one of the things that the Holy Spirit brings to us and helps us helps us to have a proper uh, um, estimation of who God is and have a respect and an awe and a reverence and an honor for God that causes us to be able to receive all that God has for us. So the fear of God is one of the uh, things that the Holy Spirit helps us with, helps us to fear God. And, and as I said, the fear of God is required. It's the beginning of wisdom. It's 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 it it clean it cleans up your life. Uh, it's the beginning of knowledge. It hates hatred. It it hates uh, of uh, pride and 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 evil. It's the beginning of wisdom. Uh, they walked in the fear of the Lord in Acts nine. Uh, the holy holiness is perfected in the fear of the Lord. Submission is required 
requires the fear of the Lord. So all of these things the Holy Spirit is bringing into our lives, allow the Holy Spirit to work those things out and cause them to function fully, fully in our lives so that we can receive the full benefits of what God wants to do in our lives. It's not about us. It's about the, the kingdom of God, the will of God. God. God has great things for each and every one of us. But 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 the glory has got to be given to God. The honor has got to be given to God. The reverence has got to be given to God. Let's get back to the point where we're scared of God. I won't do that because I, I, I'm afraid God. Uh, I'll say one more thing and, and, and that comes to mind. We were taught and preached to by my dad so until we had, I had such a fear of God, even before I even got born again. And I remember my father would say, because, you know, the Bible talks about God thunders marvelously with his voice. My father used to say when when the thunder and lightning is, is and he said it, it's God talking. Now, we know the thunder and lightning, we know the, the physics of that, but anyway. <laughs> but but he is so embedded that in me, I could be at a party, unsafe at a, at a basement party. We could be uh, drinking Valley High and Lemon Juice or, you know, just you know, just just hanging out and doing our thing. And it starts to thunder and lightning. And uh and and you know what? I I, I end up going over in the corner somewhere because I'm because you know what? Because because my father told me God is talking. <laughs> we know. Uh but it's the fear of the Lord. I, I would say, so they say, What's wrong with you, Hogan? What's what's wrong, man? Hey man. No, 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 nothing wrong. Man. There's something wrong, all right. I feel like that's God talking. I don't know if he's talking to me. He might be talking about me. That's the fear of the Lord that was put into us. Now we don't teach the fear of the Lord. Just anything goes. God accepts everything. God don't require anything and so on and so forth. So we do what we want because that's the culture. So when we start thunder and start lightning, I would get quiet. Because I would think God was talking, even though, you know, I knew literally that I know now literally I wasn't, but that was the way it was. That's the fear of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We are in awe of you. You are God that created the heavens and the earth, the universe, the galaxies. Lord, you created the, you created us in your image and in your likeness. You fashioned us out of the dust of the ground, blew in our nostrils the breath of life. You gave us life. Lord, you are the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. Lord, we thank you. You are God, Lord, that, that you have the power of life and death in your hands. All power. Lord, and, and we know, and we are in awe, we humble ourselves before you. Lord, we prostrate ourselves before you. We want to do what's pleasing in your sight. We don't want to fall out of the favor your favor, because your word says that it is a fearful thing to fall in the hand of God. It, and I, we do not want to, we will not want to be under your judgment. So we judge ourselves, Lord. And we say, Lord, we bring the church back, bring us back to the place of respect and honor for you and your Holy Spirit and your presence. Lord, we know that you are an awesome God, awesome. And we respect you and we love you. We glorify you. And Father, I pray that, that Lord, that the message of the fear of the Lord will begin to resound in the church of Jesus Christ again, where, we're, where we are, we're so respectful and honor of God and, and you're so holy until we walk quietly before you, walk in humility before you, because we know you could you could just take our breath and we're gone. It is because of your mercy that we're not consumed. So Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Have your way in each and every one of our lives. Let the fear of God be the, the, uh, the compass for our lives. In Jesus' name, 
Amen and amen. Well, praise the name of the Lord. People of God, I hope you've received tonight. I've given you a lot of scriptures. I hope you wrote some of those scriptures down. Make this, make that a part of your life. Let the Holy Spirit reveal to you the fear of God so that you'll know how to walk with God. Because that's the way you have to, the only way that you can walk with God is you walk with God in the fear. The Bible says walking, that they were walking in Acts 9 and 31. They were walking in the fear of God. It was a lifestyle. Have the lifestyle of the fear of the God. I want you to uh, to just uh, to be terrified of God, but I do want you to be in awe of him. Because I'm telling you, it'll make a whole lot of difference in your life. Nobody have to watch you. You, you, you. You'll be so respectful of God and tell you certain things you just won't do because you because you know God sees you. God bless you. Tonight, I want to just also announce that on tomorrow night, tomorrow night, the woman of the women of the Bible, Prophetess Joyce, will be teaching uh, 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 the lesson on the on the women of the Bible, uh, and uh, on tomorrow at seven o'clock, uh, it's going to be it, it'll be it'll be wonderful. I, I I see the time that she spends before the Lord to bring and to teach these lessons. So. Please avail yourself of that. Uh, so at seven o'clock tomorrow evening, Women of the Bible, Pastor Joyce will be teaching. Also want to remind you that on Sunday morning, Kathy Summers Kelly will be with us on Sunday morning. She'll be ministering on Sunday morning for us. Uh, she is she is a prophet. She she's a psalmist. She she's a she's uh, just a, a a a powerful anointed woman of God. She's going to be ministering us on Sunday morning. So I'm asking you to come out, invite somebody to come out. I believe it's going to be tremendous. It's going to be blessed. And uh, so come on out. I want to also just say, I want to thank each and every one of the of you that came out to the service on uh, Sunday evening, where we were at, um, uh, at X Access Church of God in Christ. I, I thank God for you guys. Um, I'm just going to tell you, I, I got a call from, from uh, Pastor uh, Brian uh, Edwards, and he was giving me testimony after testimony after testimony. I'm telling you, saints, I thank God for you and your service to the kingdom of God and to living bread. I really do. You just want... It will not be until you stand before Jesus and receive your rewards that you'll be able to know all that God has done through your lives. And uh, it is it is no way that that we, Pastor Joyce and myself, could, could accomplish anything without the help of, of such faithful people of God. So I just want to thank you. I, I, I got a call today and it was just, we, we talked and we rejoiced uh, so much freedom and liberty testimonies coming in uh, from the Sunday night service. So thank you so much and I appreciate you being and coming out and being a part of what God uh, has begun uh, in, in, in that ministry. So God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. We look forward to seeing you uh, tomorrow, seven o'clock, Women of the Bible. And then we'll see you on Sunday. Looking forward to a great time. God bless you. Have a wonderful night in Jesus name. Goodbye now. Good night. God bless you. Good night.